Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about professionals using the iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. Today on the podcast is Matthias, founder of Eternal Storms Software. He develops the fantastic drag-and-drop-enabled app Yoink. In today's interview, we dive into what this app is, how some of the more advanced features work, and some interesting use cases for the app. Towards the end of the interview, I finally learned why more apps don't support that fantastic files feature of tapping on the app icon to show recent files. Learn more about Yoink by visiting Eternal Storms website at www.eternalstorms.at slash yoink. Before my interview, I just want to share a quick split screen tip that I think a lot of you will find handy. This is something I actually discovered this week and thought you might find it handy as well. This is the ability to move your two active split screen apps to the opposite side of the screen. To do this, tap and hold on the little bar in the top middle of the rightmost application. You can then drag that application to the left to swap the two apps. I was shocked that I had not read about this or discovered this before now, and hopefully me sharing this lets others discover the somewhat hidden part of the split screen interface. With that, let's get to my interview with Matthias. I'm here today with Matthias of Eternal Storm Software, developer of Yoink. Welcome, Matthias. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I was wanting to have you on the show because drag and drop is such an integral part of iOS 11 and iPad productivity, and you've created one of, I think, the the go-to apps to use to get the most out of drag and drop, Yoink. Uh, Can you explain what Yoink is and who it's for? Sure. Uh, Yoink is basically a temporary storage place for anything you can drag, copy, or share on iPad and iPhone, as well as on the Mac, of course. And uh, it's basically for everyone who does any kind of work on, on, on the iPad. So let's say take a journalist who's writing up an article for something, and he's browsing the web, collecting images or, or links to websites that could all go into Yoink and act as a central place for, for that article basically. Okay. So it's uh, like a temporary holding place for, for most use cases you see it as, right? Uh, as I see it, yes. Of course, it can be used as a permanent storage place. But uh, in most use cases, I think it's uh, you drag something to Yoink and uh, a couple of hours later, you drag it out and be done with it. Yeah. And how do you use Yoink uh, in your like daily routine or, or work that you do? I'm using it most often as uh, a place to collect screenshots for support requests I get. Mm, yeah. So you're, <laughs> you're having it as a, a place that you have open when uh, you're responding to email and you can just drag the appropriate one into that email. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do similar things. I, I'll, have, <laughs> uh, I'll have text in, in there and various texts uh, when I'm working on social media. I'll drag and drop text in LinkedIn or if I'm sending mm-hmm. a bunch of emails to different people, I'll have text I draft up and use for that one time. I'll have, you know, subject line right. on a different thing than the uh, the uh, the body. And I put files and stuff in there too when it's appropriate. So yeah, it's it's great for, for dealing with that. Yeah, it's, it's great for almost anything because anything you can drag, you can store in your ink. So it's uh, just a great place to, to temporarily store something. Have you gotten feedback from uh, users and how they're using it? Have you seen any like very, you know, different or cool ways? Yeah, that, well, yeah you've you've heard oh, about what what I find funny is uh, some people use it mostly as an app store wish list because that feature apparently has gone away in the app store. <laughs> <laughs> so they just store the link to to the app on the app store in Yoink and check it from time to time to see if the price has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's brilliant. And so that uh, I found yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And as you were developing this app with drag and dropping so integral, what um I guess what did you discover as far as the functionality of drag and drop, how um powerful that API is or what what, what limitations did you run across? How 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 was it working with drag and drop for the, this first go around with iOS eleven? And um I have to say it was a great experience it was really quickly to implement so i had absolutely no problems with it of course i came from the mac where the api is kind of similar uh, but i had no stumbling stones or something like that in developing yoink for ipad it's very straightforward it's basically uh, anything you can drag has can have several representations of that item so 
take for example a text the text could be a rich text with styles like boldface or color or it could also be plain text where it's just just the text you have and all these representations are in one drag so you and you as the developer of the drop receptacle get to decide how that drop plays out or is it the the source that determines what what happens it's always the uh, receiving app that determines what will go into the app so yoink uh, just takes everything basically <laughs> so you can have all kinds of uh, types you can then drag out later so if you have again text you can say okay i don't want to drag out the rich text i want to drag out the uh, plain text from from yoink but if you drag the entire item out of Yoink, the receiving app, let's say notes, will decide if it takes the rich text or the, the plain text. So the, the app that provides the source uh, has no say in what goes into the receiving app. Okay. And now let's dive a little bit into some of the current features uh, and some of the newer ones, actually. Uh, sure. The first being stacks. This is something that wasn't in the version one, but you can now stack up a couple of different drag items into one big drag can you explain how yeah how this works i guess more fully well there are two ways to work with stacks the one way is uh if a drag contains more than one item let's say you drag out a couple of photos from the photos app to yoink by default those photos aren't single items in yoink but a stack which you can then of course uh, split up and get the single items or dive into the stack and get get to the single items but it basically just works like a folder so if you have several items in yoink and would like to group them you create a stack of them and have them combined in just one item which you then of course can drag out to other applications and uh, will act as one item that okay. is being dragged out so when you're dragging it out it's not acting like when when you select multiple things in a in a in a drag, you can see that little number go up. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever the number mm-hmm. is. Right. With the stack, it stays as one and becomes more as a zip. Or what, what's what's the behavior? Uh, due to the implementation, it's uh, it's basically like you would select single items. So you also see the number of, of items being dragged. Even if it's just one stack, you would see uh, the three items in the stack. Okay. That that's much more useful, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. So outside of drag and drop, uh, and that, that's the main way that I get stuff into Yoink. I've got Yoink open, and I drag stuff into it and drop it down in there. Uh, are there other ways to get things into the application? Uh, yeah. Uh, you have copy paste. So anything you have on your clipboard, you can paste into Yoink either via the main app or the Today widget, which allows you to, if you're in any kind of app, you just open your uh, notification view and get to the widgets. And there you can add any content you have in your clipboard to Yoink. And of course, uh, the share extension, which allows you to, if you're in Safari and you tap the the action button, you'll be able to add that link to to Yoink right right out of Safari, for example. Yeah. And... I noticed one of the new features that I haven't actually tried this one out yet, but uh, you can send a URL to Yoink using that share sheet, I'm guessing, right? Mm-hmm, to right, uh, yeah. download a file in the Yoink. So you have a URL, say it's a you know, .mp3 of this podcast, and it'll actually mm-hmm. download the file versus saving that text as a, a URL. Right. Will that work to download like an archive of a web page, or is it only linked files? Right now, it's only linked files, but I'm looking into <laughs> uh, web archives. <laughs> okay, excellent. For a future version, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the features in Yoink that some people may not know about is there's actually a keyboard. Uh, can you kind of explain what this is for and and um, how it works? Sure. In any text application where you can type text, you can switch to Yoink's keyboard, which basically presents you the items you have stored in Yoink, so you can copy or drag them into the text area. Okay, so you can you have the your stuff from Yoink just down in the keyboard space instead of the app space. That's right. Yep. And you have access to just text-based Yoink items? It's actually any kind of item okay. you have stored in Yoink. Okay, gotcha. Right. And then the yeah. keyboard, were there memory constraints as to how much space you could use to have that run? What limitations did you have creating the keyboard that you had to kind of fight against, if any? Uh, yeah, uh, me- there are strict memory limitations, of course. 
which had me <laughs> working overtime. <laughs> uh, but what, what I basically do now is I show the items a bit little smaller. And if the items are out of view, I take them out of memory. So I can kind of work around those limitations, which was kind of worrying me with the first version. But now it's pretty stable and I'm quite happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was also rejected by Apple, the keyboard, because um, with the first version I tried to submit to Apple, they said drag and drop is not allowed from a keyboard uh, extension, which wasn't stated anywhere in the yeah, guidelines. It's just something uh, that they... <laughs> it's just something they do, right? <laughs> right, yeah. It's like, oh, uh, let's, let's not have that happen. Yeah. <laughs> so after a lot of back and forth, they kind of changed their mind and... Uh, then allowed it onto the app store, so I'm quite happy. <laughs> that yeah, out. that's great. So you don't have to, you don't have to change the behavior. You didn't have to like say just tap it to add it to the current uh, cursor line. You can do you can do the drag and drop from the keyboard with the right. with the release mm -hmm. version, which is great. Right, it wouldn't even be supported right now. The only thing you can insert into the text area by tapping is text. Right. Yeah. So you'd have a bunch so, of useless <laughs> right uh, images <laughs> or or movies or any kind of that uh, stuff can't be directly entered into the text area. So okay. you have to yeah. paste it in or drag it in. And then another uh, thing I saw that's been recently added is a URL scheme. This is mm -hmm. a way you can talk to Yoink through just a, a, a URL from another app. Now, have you found ways to use the Workflow app with that? Is there a URL scheme hook in for Workflow or do you have to use... I think Launchpad or some of the other apps to, to work with that. Yoink's URL scheme uses the uh, X callback stuff. So you can attach another URL that should be called after the action in Yoink is called. So it would take you back to the originating app. Let's say we're in Workflow yep. and you start a, a URL scheme for, for Yoink. It would then attach its own URL scheme. So Yoink would know what to return to after it's done its, its work. Okay. So yeah, you just use it. I guess a standard URL just with the special Yoink URL in there and then it'll know mm -hmm. what to do. Okay, that, that's right. excellent. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, gotta, I gotta play around with that because I, I love the workflow app and that could be useful. Uh, <laughs> and should, should work just fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's a good example of how someone is currently using the URL schemes to, to get data in or out of Yoink and um, work with Yoink? Well, there are four, uh, currently four types of, of URL schemes. You can save any kind of string in Yoink, which you pass into the URL, or you can save the current clipboard contents into Yoink, or you can start a download of a URL and then it would go back to the to the starting app. So those are the, the three ways you can interact with Yoink right now. I'm looking into other, other ways mm -hmm. for future updates, but I think the most popular right now is the uh, download of a URL where you can just call Yoink, tell it to download this particular URL, and then it would take you back to the originating app and the download would run in the background. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. And what's your favorite way to interact with you? Like you've got the keyboard. We didn't talk about the files app integration yet. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. then you've got the main like app. How do you like to work with the with Yoink? I'm using the keyboard most of the time, I have to say. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, is that just from a screen space? Uh, perspective, it's like oh, I have a, like a, a free third app there that you can use almost. Right. Uh, well, it basically, it basically goes back to my first use case because I'm using Yoink most often with support requests I get by by mail. Yeah. <laughs> so if I have any images stored in Yoink, I can just access them from the keyboard right away without having to go into slide over or side by side. So that's quite quite comfortable for me. Interesting. Okay. And uh, speaking of the files app integration, um, that works just like any other file provider, right? You can just pull up in the files app and it'll treat all your drops as individual files, like text, text right. drags will be .txt. And yeah, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, what kind of feature requests have you seen from your customers? Have you had a lot of feedback as to things that they'd like to see in it in the future? The number one request is, I have to say, sync. <laughs> oh, yes. So you're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's also an iPhone, which um, it, mm -hmm. there's there's no drag and drop system wide, but it's still a useful, I guess, repository to throw stuff. Um, so Right. The, yeah. the iPhone edition was a last minute call on my part. <laughs> <laughs> but with sync, it will become much more, much more useful, I guess. And it's something I'm actually working on, and I hope to be able to release it 
<clears throat> soon. <laughs> <laughs> now that'd be through iCloud <laughs> as the sync mechanism. iCloud, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. excellent. Yeah. Now, something that I've noticed, I noticed in the beta time with iOS 11, and um, I'm surprised I'm not seeing more and more of this, but so if you tap and hold on the files icon, you get a list of recent files. The Omni group does this. I know like Omni Graffle and Omni Outliner does this, where mm-hmm. you'll just tap on the icon and get a list of files that you can actually drag stuff out of that recent file list, which makes it really useful as a docked app for me to just throw stuff in files as a little repository um, to, to upload in Safari later. Um, is this something that is easy to, in, or could it be integrated in the way um, like OmniGraffle does? As, is that something that would be possible in the future? Uh, I've been looking into that since the very start, but I found that um, to support it would be kind of difficult because uh, Yoink has all these extensions, the keyboard extension and the Today widget, etc. And uh, it uses what is called a, a app container where files are stored and can be accessed by any extension. Oh, but interesting. Okay. The, the, the long tap recent files list only, as far as I know, only works with the documents folder. And every app on iPhone and iPad has its own container where it stores all its files. It doesn't have access to any uh, global documents folder. So each app has a documents folder. The, that long tap recent files list accesses that documents folder. And Yoink doesn't store them in that folder because it has all these extensions it has to work with. So that's kind of difficult for me to implement. But I'm still looking into it and hoping to find a solution soon. Yeah, okay, that's really curious. Okay, so because you're using extensions, you have to store the data elsewhere outside a document? Right. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing you've looked into aliases of files and <laughs> sending stuff yeah. over there as an alias and stuff like that. Um, it would just show a, a, the alias file, but you couldn't do anything with it. So. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, that'd be uh, another cool place to see Yoink, but yeah, it's it's the the better call I think to have the keyboard and all those other places that you. Yeah, you I think I uh, filed a bug report with Apple, but haven't heard back yet. So I uh, hope they they're doing some kind of work in this area. Yeah, because it would be nice to because that that's probably the reason that yeah other apps aren't doing it. Uh, it's it's a very select few. I, I you know I've seen the Omni Group do it with some of their apps, but that not many more as far as third mm-hmm. parties, which. It's a really cool feature. <laughs> right, I like it too. Uh, I saw it in, in Files app when I first played around with the iOS 11 beta and thought, wow, that would be cool for Yoink. And then I started implementing it and it just didn't work and I was kind of disappointed. But <laughs> Yeah, you'd have to have like a separate uh, app for people that just want that feature with the core <laughs> Yoink. It's like, uh, I don't want to do that probably. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Is there anything we didn't uh, dive into about Yoink that you want to talk about? Um, I had a thought, an alternative to that recent files list. There's on on iPhone at least you have the 3D quick actions where you press hard on the app icon and it would show a quick actions you can access. Yeah, it also shows uh, any sort of widget you define. So that kind of works in the direction of the recent files list. Mm, yeah, where interesting. You, yeah, where you would uh, force press onto the app icon and it, it would show Yoink's today widget. And there you have the most recent item stored in Yoink, which you can then copy into your clipboard. Okay, yeah, that that would be one way about it, yeah. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think of anything else. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's all the questions I have. Any, any final words about Yoink before we um we uh, we end? Um, <laughs> I think we covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fantastic. Just yeah. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the App Store, just search for Yoink. Uh, there will be a link in the show notes to it as well. Thank you so much for your uh, time uh, this morning for me and this afternoon for you. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for having me. I'm very glad you had me on the show. Absolutely. Thanks again to Matthias for his time and creating such a useful iOS app. You can find the show notes over at iPadPros.net. You can follow the show on Twitter at iPadProsPodcast. And follow me on Twitter at T Chatton. Feedback and topic requests can be sent to iPadProsPodcast at gmail.com. If you have any audio feedback, you can also send that to that same email address, and I'll see if I can find a good place for it in a future episode. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>